Let's turn to the Word of God. And um, we are in the 14th chapter of Mark. I would like to draw your attention to the trial of Jesus. Jesus, while he was here, he was under trial. He was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and then he is under trial. When we look at it from an angle where we always talk about the suffering of the innocent, the world talks a lot about the suffering of the innocent. But the question is, is anybody innocent? Because technically, everyone is under the influence of sin. We live in a fallen world and we are all under the influence of sin. So we are all sinners. Directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly, whatever we suffer is because of the sin. It might not be the sin that that person has personally committed, but we live in a sinful world, we live in a fallen world. Then what does it mean by the suffering of the innocent? Here's the thing. There was only one person who was innocent and he suffered for us on that cross. We are going to look at this trial of Jesus. When we look at the lambs that were slain during the um, Passover, we see that the lambs were innocent, but they died for somebody else's sin. But here's the thing. The lambs never volunteered to give their lives for the people whom they were dying for. There was only one Lamb of God who volunteered to give his life for the people who were even crucifying him on the cross. He died even for his enemies. And that is the great sacrifice that the Lord did for us. That is the sacrifice that can save us. But let's look at the trial. The trial of Jesus, it was um, a twofold trial. One which was done by the Jewish people. The other one was done by the um, Romans. The Romans, as you would know, were the occupying power at that time in uh, Jerusalem, in Israel. And when we look at this trial, and uh, we, uh, we are in um, Mark uh, chapter 14, verses 53 onwards. The first trial of uh, Jesus was at the house of the high priest Annas and Caiaphas. Technically, there had to be only one high priest, but during that time, there were two high priests, Annas and Caiaphas. One was appointed by the Romans as their puppet high priest. The high priests were the Sadducees. They had um, power in the temple. The first uh, trial that Jesus went through was at the house of the high priest Annas. And uh, we go from there to the other trial of Jesus, that's the second part of the first trial, and that was at the place of, uh, again, at the house of the high priest, and Caiaphas was there. This was held at night, in the middle of the night, this trial, trial was held. And if we go ahead, we see that the third trial, trial was done early in the morning, and it was uh, in the court of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the court of law for the Jewish people. And that was the uh, third part of the trial that we see here. After that, what we see is Jesus being taken to the Romans. But here's the question. What was Jesus being tried for? That's the question. And the answer is, in the Jewish court of law, Jesus was being tried for blasphemy. What that means is that they said that Jesus 
claimed to be God and that was blasphemy. Many other religions ask this question, did Jesus claim to be God? The basic thing what the Jewish community or the Sanhedrin was accusing Jesus of was that he claimed to be God and that according to them was blasphemy. So there is no question whether Jesus claimed to be God or not because he did not speak but when they asked him are you the son of the living God and he said I am. What he was saying is when he said, I am, he was taking the name of God, Yahweh. And that's what was so disturbing to this Jewish people. They couldn't understand how can this person call himself God. So here's, what, uh, here's the point I would want to make. The point is that Jesus did claim to be God. If there is someone who is asking a question where Jesus claimed to be God, this is one of those instances where Jesus claimed to be God. Let's go ahead. Um, now, what has happened is, according to the Jewish people, according to the Sanhedrin and the high priests, Jesus is guilty. Jesus is found guilty. Guilty of what? Guilty of blasphemy. And what was the charge on him? He claimed to be God. That was the blasphemy. Uh, that was the charge they had on him. And he was found guilty of that. We go ahead. We go to the Roman court. And when we go to the Roman court, when, we, when they take him to Pilate, they could not charge him with blasphemy. Because according to the Roman law, blasphemy or somebody claiming to be God was not a charge enough to have a penalty of death. So, what happened here is, the people clearly changed the charge and they charged him with treason. When they went to the Romans, this is what they said, that he claims to be the king. And that is treason. It was changed from blasphemy to treason. And he goes to Pilate. Ironically, what we see here is this man who was found guilty according to the Jewish court of law. When he goes to Pilate, when he goes to the court of law of the Romans, Pilate says he is innocent. And Pilate is not able to figure out how to get Jesus off the hook. And so what he does is he sends him to Herod. So that is the second part. First part, uh, first part of the trial, he has three trials there. And second part of the trial, he is first tried at Pilate's place. And this, then he sent to Herod. And then Herod sends him back to Pilate. All this while, Pilate knows that this man is innocent. And he's trying to release him. He, he even gives them an option. He says, I can release him for you. And they choose to have Barabbas released instead of Jesus. Barabbas was an insurrectionist. And the people rather would have an insurrectionist than the Messiah himself. After these trials, Jesus is brought back to the court of Pilate. Pilate, after having tried everything, says that I am innocent of this man's blood. The question is, here is, who is under trial? Is it Jesus under trial or is it Pilate under trial? But what we see here is Pilate is saying that I am innocent of this man's blood. What we see here is the roles are reversed and we see Pilate standing there like a criminal because he wants to wash his hands off and he wants to say that I am innocent. Let me tell you this. This is one important question 
every individual has to answer. Who do you think Jesus is? Do you think Jesus is your savior? You need to answer that question. Who do you think Jesus is? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? That's the most important question mankind, mankind can answer. We all have to answer this question because the reason is our destiny depends on that question, on the answer to that very question. So may God bless you. Let the Lord help you to make a decision. Look at Jesus and figure out who he is. May God bless you all.